So I went to the Naval Academy, and from there I served as selected Special Warfare. So that's the SEAL teams. So I was a SEAL officer, and that's where I learned firsthand that people don't know much about the ocean at all, which you get very intimately familiar with when you are diving at night and you're lost. Humanity really doesn't know much about the ocean, you know, both from a defense perspective and from a commercial perspective, and also from a conservation perspective. If somebody could make robots that were very smart and could stay out for a very long time with nobody touching them, we should be able to get a very high resolution map of the seafloor, which is what led to the creation of this, and it's what led to the creation of a data platform that makes it really easy to view, upload, download, share, or keep private ocean data as you see fit. So Seagate gave us money to start that, and we got to work. In 2005, we were getting ready to go on our first deployment, and we were going to Baghdad, but we started using this new thing called Google Earth. And when you opened up Google Earth, you could see the bottom of the ocean. And about that same time, a nuclear submarine, the USS San Francisco, runs into an underwater mountain. And you know, at the time, we're looking at this new Google Earth thing and saying, well, you can see the bottom of the ocean. You know, how are we running into mountains underwater? And that's where we learned for the first time that most of that data is extrapolated. We've only mapped about 10 to 20% of the ocean to any meaningful resolution. And a lot of that data is just not there. And to the extent that it is somewhere, it's sitting on a shelf in a safe, and it's not accessible. This is Teradep's large diameter, uncrewed underwater vehicle. It's a meter in diameter. It's about nine meters long. Uh, the thing that's really special about this is its ability to stay out for a really long time without anybody having to touch it. So in the center of this, which you can't see, is a diesel electric generator. So this is the world's only low cost, self recharging, submersible drone, effectively. And so what that means is it's very cheap to operate so we can stay out for a long time. And we're carrying millions of dollars worth of lithium battery equivalent in a few hundred dollars of diesel fuel. So that's the big differentiator of this. Uh, it's designed for high resolution mapping. So we can carry a multitude of sensors that gets us data that people need to make good decisions on. You know, say you want to put something down on the ocean floor, pick it up or know the condition of what's down there. So think submarine fiber optic cables, underwater pipelines, high voltage DC cables, things like that. So you're obviously gonna have a surface expression. We've gotta breathe air to start the diesel electric generator. So there is gonna be noise, there's gonna be emissions, but it's a whole heck of a lot stealthier than say a large surface ship that would traditionally be used to do these mapping operations. So one of the big value propositions to this is the minimization or the complete removal of humans babysitting assets like these underwater. Generally when you put a big robot in the water, there's a surface ship sitting on top of it. And that's A, burning a bunch of diesel fuel to your emissions comment, but B, you're really putting humans at risk and you're spending a lot of money. So if we can start pairing things like this, robots that are really smart, that can recharge themselves, we can start removing the human from that data collection loop. And that's where we're actually gonna get scale. And in a defense context, that's where the United States is gonna get decision advantage over potential competitors because we're gonna have a better understanding of the SIVA. So when this LDUV is underwater, it's running on battery. But when we come up, that's when we start recharging. So the diesel generator kicks on fully autonomously. There's no human interaction with it. We recharge the lithium ion batteries. We go underwater, start collecting seabed data again.